Wow. Oh my gosh. I didn't see that one coming, at least not today. This is what you call the Friday news dump, but this was a big one, a big one, ladies and gentlemen. We have 5,000 hours, 5,000 hours of J6 tapes to look at right now. My goodness. And this is all thanks to none other than Mike Johnson, the new speaker of the house, who uh, quite willingly came forward with this stuff. To, to take a look at this. Oh my gosh. So there's all these different camera shots. So much material here. And let me just say, this is going to be a very busy, busy weekend for all of us, is it not? Mike Johnson coming out with 5,000 hours of footage, which means you don't have to rely on Nancy Pelosi's daughter Alexandra's footage anymore. <laughs> you get to actually see it yourself. Hello, welcome to the program. I am Trish Regan. I bring you this live breaking news. We are brought to you in part, as always, by LegacyPMInvestments.com. LegacyPMInvestments.com, 1-866-589-0560 is their number. If you're interested in investing in gold, we can talk about some investing things a little bit later on because Disney's in the hot seat again with Nelson Peltz. The airs are getting all worked up. We can get into all of that, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm just blown away. You know, Mike Johnson... He talked about this. He said that this might actually be happening. And now, sure enough, here we get to see if I can reveal this for you. Here's his tweet. I applaud subcommittee chairman, Representative Loudermilk, and House Admin Committee for all their ongoing work to deliver all the January 6th tapes to the American people. Today, 5,000 more hours of capital security footage from January 6th, 2021 is now available for the public to view. And interestingly, they put it on to Rumble. So we're going to have a busy weekend, are we not? <laughs> anyway, again, take a look at just some of this. This is just some of what has been put out on Twitter right now. Some of the footage from January 6th. You can't tell a heck of a lot, I think, in, in these particular pictures. I think it's going to take some time for us to all go through this. It's a lot of material to go through. Don't forget Tucker Carlson, he and his team had already gone through quite a bit of it. I remember when he first got that footage and the left went wild. They were absolutely positively furious. How dare Tucker get this footage, right? Remember that one? They were quite, quite clear on that over and over again. But it was um, encouraging to see that somebody had it. I mean, from my perspective, certainly as a journalist, I feel that more information is always the better, right? We're better off getting more and more of this in as opposed to just bits and pieces. I didn't love that they just gave it to one reporter. I'm like, wait a second, isn't this public information? Like, don't we own those cameras as taxpayers? As long as you're really not in security violation, why not be able to show these things? And yet they ran with this whole security violation, security violation. How dare we tell a different narrative for so long? That was Chuck Schumer. Remember him on the floor? I've showed you this clip so many times, I won't do it again right now, but Chuck Schumer down on the floor on Capitol Hill saying, Tucker Carlson, how dare you, how dare you, how dare you? Fox News, shame on you. I mean, that was basically the beginning and the end for poor Tucker. In my case, it was that I dared to speak out about coronavirus being possibly politicized in some way, shape, or form. Hmm, wonder how that happened. Could they have possibly politicized it? They didn't like that very much, right? I mean, that's the problem with institutional legacy media companies, by the way, which are just dying on the vine, a slow death. You look at Fox News, it's just a stock price down 30%, 31% just in the last three years since March 2021. You look at Disney and the challenges they've had. Now, they're, they're starting to make a little bit of a comeback because there's some hope that Bob Iger may be able to pull them out of their big darn ditch, but I don't necessarily think it's going to be that easy. We're going to get to that story a little bit later on. But in other words, you get a problem here with legacy media trying to do whatever the establishment tells them to do. And so you can't actually report on stuff. That's why you're going to be here. Reminder, subscribe, 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 share, like. It is a live edition of the program. I know I came a little bit earlier today, but we had this breaking news, and I just wanted to get it to you sooner rather than later. We may have to do this again over the weekend once we've had time to digest all of these tapes. But again, it's a big deal because all we were seeing was Nancy Pelosi's daughter, who was a documentary filmmaker. She was there for HBO and, of course, her mom. She then sold or gave the footage to CNN, which CNN ran in a loop over and over and over again as a, quote, CNN exclusive. Well, 
wow, it wasn't like it was CNN's team in there. No, it was Alexandra Pelosi, the daughter of the Speaker of the House. So there was clearly a viewpoint. And I'm sorry, you know, Nancy, you got enough friends in the media business. Could you not have at least tried to look a little impartial? Did you really have to bring your daughter in for that footage to totally, utterly control it and then not allow anybody to see anything else? So I applaud House Republicans today for bringing us in, for trying to, you know, reveal whatever, whatever's there, we ought to be able to see it, right? We're all adults here. And so this is the right thing to do, but you're not supposed to do it. Just like you're not, you weren't supposed to talk about Hunter Biden's laptop and you're definitely not supposed to talk about the impeachment inquiry going on for Joe Biden right now on Capitol Hill. It's, it's again, like no go territory. And conservative media outlets, especially the establishment ones, are just getting tarred and feathered right now. Here's MSNBC complaining, how dare Fox, how dare Newsmax ever report on any possible impropriety between Hunter and his dad over Burisma, Ukraine, etc. What? Constant, do you think maybe the American public is getting a little tired of this because they can't fa- they can't understand it, it's complicated, they don't know all the names and places and faces, and you haven't proved the basic point yet that President Biden was directly involved. Is the public getting tired of it? I just don't know how much longer this investigation can can go on without bearing some fruit. Some hosts on Fox News and Newsmax are pushing back on the inquiry into President Biden as House Republicans fail over and over again to produce any evidence against the president. Right. And, and, you know, Willie, you've had that Neil Cavuto and some Fox News hosts have even over the past couple of weeks said, there's nothing there. What are you going to prove? Even when Sean Hannity is throwing softballs to come where he said, are you going to prove that Joe Biden crime oh, okay. family? So blah, I see blah, what's blah, going blah, on blah, here. And come MSNBC. Get- MSNBC doing the White House's bidding for it. The White House wants you to know there's no nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Just like, hey, you know, when they had to close down the New York Post Twitter account because 51X spooks were saying that that laptop thing, oh, that wasn't real. That was just Russian disinformation. So again, now you have the White House coming out saying you are not allowed to report on this. For goodness sakes, Fox News, cease and desist. So they sent this letter over to Suzanne Scott. It was a three-page letter. You can see it right here. We write to you about Fox News Channel, Fox News Digital, covering of the false, discredited bribery allegations involving President Joe Biden, which Fox outlets have given significant coverage to over the past year. Look, it's an inquiry. It's an impeachment inquiry. Therefore, it's news. I get it. These are nothing but allegations right now. But nonetheless, it's going on. It's going on. And guess what? You guys, ah, on the left, were reporting it nauseam, this whole dirty dossier thing, which was completely discredited. And yet you had the likes of John Brennan on CNN and MSNBC saying that this stuff was absolutely positively real. So don't give me this. I mean, what are you going to do, White House? We do have a First Amendment last time I checked. I think, I hope, you know, who recently realized that that was even under threat was none other than my former colleague. I think we're all happy to be out of there. (laughs) Tucker Carlson, who went over to Moscow to interview Vladimir Putin. Now, I'm of the view that, hey, more information, the better, even if it's propaganda, right? I want to understand and hear all the propaganda coming from all sides. And by the way, what do you think intelligence gathering is about? You have to understand the propaganda coming from all sides. The problem is they don't want you hearing any of the propaganda. we got our own propaganda, thank you very much. Everybody has a spin. Don't kid yourself to think that somehow, it is an entirely naive position to think that not everybody is very busy spinning their own narrative. We just learned the other day, for example, that the CIA has had an op in Ukraine for the last 10 years, since 2014, since the Maiden Revolution. Well, That might help explain why Putin was a little uncomfortable, especially when Joe Biden showed up in office with Blinken saying, hey, we got to expand NATO even more. I mean, they've gone from, what, 17 countries to 30 in the last however many years? So Tucker Carlson went over to do an interview with Vladimir Putin, but he got a big warning. Think about this. From his lawyers first, and this is crazy to me. This is crazy. I mean, I'm a journalist, but even if I'm not a journalist, right, I'm an American citizen. You think about citizen journalists right now, independent journalists, people that are not tied to networks that are here, like me, talking to you one-on-one, live show again today here on YouTube. We're also live on Rumble and on Facebook. 
and Twitter every single day. So this is amazing. Tucker Carlson actually having to get a really difficult message from his lawyers. And I think he was pretty stunned by it, as he should be, as I am, and as you should be. But it gels with everything we're hearing from this White House. Uh, my lawyers, before I left, and these are people who work for a big law firm, this is not Bob's law firm, this is one of the biggest law firms in the world, said, you're going to get arrested if you do this by the U.S. government on sanctions violations. And I said, well, I, you know, I don't, I don't recognize the legitimacy of that, actually, because I'm American. And I've lived here my whole life, and that's so outrageous that I'm happy to face that that risk because I I so reject the premise. Okay, I'm an American. I should be able to talk to anyone I want to, and I I plan to exercise that freedom, which I think I was born with. And I gave them this long <laughs> long lecture. They're like, "We're just lawyers," but that was um, it was it was a let me put it this way. I don't know how much you dealt with lawyers, but it costs many thousands of dollars to get a conclusion like that. Like they sent a whole bunch of their summer associates or whatever. They sent, they put a lot of people on this question, checked a lot of precedent, and I think, and they sent me a 10 page memo on it and their sincere conclusion was, do not do this. And of course it made me mad. So I was lecturing them on the phone and I had another call with the head lawyer and he said, well, look, a lot will depend on the questions that you ask Putin. Mm -hmm. If you're seen as too nice to him, you could get arrested when you come back. Mm. And I was like, you're describing a fascist country, okay? You're saying that the U.S. government will arrest me if I don't ask the questions they want asked? Is, uh, my lawyers, before I left, and these are people who work for a big law firm. This is not Bob's law firm. This is one of the big. Think about that. I mean, that's really, really scary. Again, we ought to be able to talk to whoever we want. We ought to be able to get information however we want. But somehow you could be in violation. And by the way, don't kid yourself. This is exactly what people were saying. You had Bill Crystal, who's sort of a, you know, Former, well, he was a former, this is interesting, he was former chief of staff to uh, Dan Quayle, I believe. So, you know, he's, he's from the sort of establishment class. Dan Quayle's not exactly a great claim to fame. But anyway, you know, he, he's out there saying that, that we should arrest or detain, detain Tucker Carlson on his way back into the country. You had some members of Congress calling him a traitor. I mean, for goodness sakes, you guys should welcome more information, especially if you have any interest in getting any kind of peace over there. You should welcome all the information you can get. And then you had the mainstream media freaking out because frankly, they were all just so damn jealous that they didn't have the interview. Believe me, I know these people. <laughs> Chris Wallace. Oh, yeah, Chris Wallace was like really mad. He was so mad he had to play his old interview from 2019 with Putin. <laughs> yeah, Um. Look, it's, it's a caddy business. It's a caddy business. And there were people that, how did Tucker get that interview and not me? Oh, it's because he's going to give him softballs, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, this is partly why the mainstream media is so darn under fire right now, under fire in huge ways. And it's because they're all so damn woke, right? I mean, that's the whole problem. Look at Disney. Look at the challenges. I mean, they had a decent earnings quarter last, last time around, but we'll see if they can keep up that momentum. I look at their share price. I mean, they have just plunged. They've been cut in half in the last several years. Fox down 31%. I mean, all of these companies are really challenged, but part of it is because they're just getting too darn woke. And Disney is leading the way. It's why none of their movies are succeeding. Elon Musk weighed in on this recently, and it's important to hear in light of now what the heirs of Walt Disney himself are saying. We're going to fight the woke mind virus, then the woke mind virus will fight back. And unfortunately, Disney is deeply infected with the woke <laughs> mind virus. In fact, if you ask an AI, what is the most woke company on earth? It's Disney. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, and, and you have to say, what would, I mean, I think they should be asking themselves, what would Walt Disney think of Disney today. I think he's turning in his grave. <laughs> yeah, I think he's I think he's so happy, sure. Yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you, Elon. I think he totally is. But you know what? His heirs, they've been infected with the woke mind virus too. So just to, to back up a little bit, Nelson Peltz, who owns Trion Fund Management, big deal, billionaire fund, hedge fund guy. And he's like looking at Disney saying, well, this could be a great company, but it's been so mismanaged and so poorly run and they keep making 
bombs out of, you know, these movies just keep bombing one after another. They need a little discipline from a financial perspective and also in terms of understanding what their customer wants. So Nelson's trying to get some board seats so he can get a little change and a little action, but you know, they resist that. They brought Bob Iger back in and Bob does not like Nelson in there, not one single bit. And so he's courting the heirs of Walt Disney. So the heirs of Walt Disney just came out with a letter here. And I, I wanted to show you this particular part because they say, quote, we may not agree on everything, but we know our grandfather would be especially proud of what Disney means to the world today. We also know that he, like us, would be very concerned by the threat, by the threat posed by self-anointed activist investors who are really wolves in sheep's clothing, just waiting to tear Disney apart if they can trick shareholders into opening the door for them. Hey, listen, guys, you know what? I'll just tell you this. Nelson wants to make money. Shareholders want to make money. Everybody wants to make money. Nobody likes it when Disney shares decline and get cut in half from like 200 bucks to 100 bucks in the span of a few years because you guys have these woke ideas about what you think kids really want to see in the movie theaters. Yeah, it's, it's not cool for the shareholders that are investing in the company. I'll tell you, overall, one of the reasons why we're having so many issues is because we got bad policies. It's one reason why I encourage you all to go to americansforprosperity.org, a group that's really aggressively working to make sure that we have good policies in place, good policies so that you're not paying a fortune at the gas tank, for goodness sakes, that you're not seeing massive inflation right across the board, and that you have these individual liberties, including your freedom of speech. Americansforprosperity.org. Go there, sign up, be part of the team. They are working really hard. I'll tell you, if Donald Trump gets this Oval Office this time, he's going to need a strong Senate. He's going to need a strong House in order to get policies through. And that's what they're committed to doing. I believe they actually just dropped Nikki Haley from their funding because they want to actually reallocate resources, right? You want to put it into some of these other places. So check them out, americansforprosperity.com. Um, I, I leave you with this. Donald Trump there at the border just yesterday. This has become the number one issue, the number one issue in this campaign. According to Gallup, 28% of Americans see immigration as the number one issue, followed by the economy, followed by inflation. I mean, of course, all of them are quite related. So Donald Trump was down at the border. Ask was Joe Biden, by the way, yesterday. It was like the duel at the border, right? In Texas, a Texas, good old-fashioned Texas duel. And, it, you know, people are upset because Donald Trump is talking about deportations. Listen to him here. I will immediately cancel every open borders policy of the Biden administration. You can come into our country, but you have to come in legally. Under Biden, other countries are emptying out their prisons, insane asylums and mental institutions, and dumping everyone right here in the good old USA, following the Eisenhower model. People don't realize, but Dwight Eisenhower is very, very tough in this issue, the toughest, very, very tough. You don't think of him as being that way, but he was very tough in this issue. We will use all necessary state, local, federal, and military resources to carry out the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. All right. When you so hear him talking about really detention mad. camps, a massive deportation program, what does that say to you? That signals to me that he's willing to violate the Constitution, violate our civil rights, violate constitutional rights. And, and let me tell you, like, it, it is impossible I'm to sorry. deport. Like, that's a Representative Escobar. I'm sorry. Like, it, how does our Constitution protect people from Mexico? How does it protect people from China coming in illegally? How does it protect people from the Middle East coming up? Through our southern border, I, I really don't think this protects them, actually. I think it protects American citizens, thank you very much. Let's remember who we're trying to protect here, okay? <laughs> like, it's not that hard. And, and the more the left digs in on this nonsense, the harder they're making it, frankly, for themselves. Frankly, for Joe Biden. And of course, in the interim, for the country. I want to thank all of you for being here. We get to go through all of these tapes. I'm going to spend my Friday night. Exciting, huh? Looking through some of these. And I'll be back with you over the weekend because I think we need to take a good hard look at what exactly is in here. I do applaud Mike Johnson for 
coming through. You know, like they had lost these tapes for a while. There was a lot of like, what's going on? Great to see all you guys. I really appreciate it. Share, share, share. This is going to be one story that's a little bit hard to, you know, penetrate with. So all the more reason to share. If you have not signed up and subscribe to the channel, make sure you do that. Make sure you hit the bell, all that good stuff. And we will talk over the weekend because this is a developing story and I want to continue to bring back new aspects to it for you. So I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.